to my channel. Um, sorry I've been gone for a while, but I've been moving house, so we're in a whole new setup. Um, sorry if the lighting goes funny during this video or if things are a little wacky. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to the new room, so yeah, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Um, so, recently the Victoria's Secret show was on. Um, I thought that I would do a uh, look inspired by the kind of looks they wear. Um, it's just a really fresh, easy look to do. Um, I think people hear Victoria's Secret and get a little bit like, oh, it must be full on. But um, they often do very clean, very fresh, very glowy looks. Um, so it's really great for coming into summer um, and just for feeling pretty and put together, I think is how I'd describe it. So I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, to start off with, we are going to use the Golan. Oh, gee, this is a hell of a name. The Meteorites Perlers Light Diffusing Perfecting Primer. This is what it looks like. It's really pretty. Um, pretty much if you want something that kind of gives a glow without um, being too full on, you want anything that says light reflecting. Because they're also... Um, kind of gives that airbrush look as well, it kind of smooths things over and gives it, <laughs> gives it a bit of a glow without being like full on, just reflects the light as the name suggests. So anything that says light reflecting on it, if you want that kind of blown out glowy look, girl, go for the light reflecting things. So I'm just jotting that in little small amounts all over my face and then pushing that into the skin, just a little bit, just gently. Cool. Oh, this just smells really good. I always forget that it smells good when I use it, and I use it and I'm just like, oh, that smells really good. Yeah, riveting stuff, I know. Um, so now I'm going to go in with the NYX Dark Circle Corrector in the shade Light. Yes, Light. Um, the reason I'm using this particular one over the Benefit Erase Paste is that this one doesn't reflect light in cameras. So, the Benefit one can give you a little bit of flashback in camera, so it'll give you that kind of a lighter, more pronounced lighter looking ring under your eyes. This one doesn't. So you get the same effect but without the flashback. The reason I would use the Benefit one though is I do think it does a better job of concealing the circles in general. Like I think it actually does a better job of masking them. Like this is a bit of a thinner formula, um, but it doesn't fuck back in photos. So. That's why I'm using this one today. Next, I'm going to go in with the Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Concealer. Um, I have a few little breakouts at the moment. Um, and Victoria's Secret Models are known for their super flawless skin. So, you know what they say, fake it till you make it, right? No, that's actually terrible advice for us. Don't follow that. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. I'm trying to be pretty sparing with this just because you can always build up more later. So, my kind of philosophy of concealer is you don't need it, don't put it on to start with. Um, and start with like the smallest possible area, and then if you do that, and then you feel like you need more, build more on as you go. Just that way, it's like you know, like when you're cooking and you want to put something in something, and you're like, this is like the vaguest sentence ever. But if you're cooking, you want to put a spice in. They always say put a little bit less in at first, taste it, and then see how you feel because you can always put more in, but you can't take it out. Same philosophy with makeup. Oh, what was I reaching for? This. So while I'm just letting my face settle a little bit, um, let those products settle in before I put the foundation on, I'm going to do my brows. Um, I'll be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Definer, as per usual. Um, and they always have like relatively natural but kind of soft feathery brows. So I'm going to be doing a few, a bit more drawing of strokes on today. And I'm going to be using this pencil product as opposed to a gel because the gels tend to look more uniform and I want to keep those natural hairlines. Now I do want my brows to look groomed-ish, like quite, like I want it to be feathery, but I don't want them to look messy. 
So just to neaten up the edges, I've taken the Benefit. I can never tell you what it is. I've used it this much. Look how little this is. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. But I have well and truly used this um, highlighter pencil. It's from Benefit. Um, and I'll put the product name somewhere in here. Because, um, uh, yeah, I really like it. It's a good consistency. Blends pretty easily just with my finger, so I'm just using my finger to just blend that out. And it's just a really easy trick when your brows are behaving, or if you're a little overdue for getting them neatened up. It's just a really easy hack for um, making them a little bit more groomed without actually having to do anything to groom them. Um, so the other reason I will do brows first is uh, that way I don't get as foundation brows. So if you're putting on like a decent amount of full coverage foundation, what can happen is you get build up in your brows and they look cakey and weird. So by putting the brow product in first, it kind of avoids that happening. Um, for my foundation today, speaking of foundation, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Born This Way in some sort of party makeup. Um, warm nude. And so I'm just going to take some of that and using a flat top brush, I'm going to just go for it. Now this foundation is a little bit more yellow than I would like on me, um, but it's working. Like I can make it work. But generally speaking, I probably wouldn't go this yellow. Was a game, now I can't get you out of my brain Oh, it's such a shame that we don't talk I hate it when you run out of a product that you like to use like regularly And you're like, why? Why? But at the same time, you're like, but I could get a new one because I use it all the time It's a really hard life Put your first one for I'm going to blend that over my ears a little bit as well. And I'm going to take a little bit down my neck too, just so it's all like a flat canvas. Alright, we're going to leave the face for now and move on to eyes. Victoria's Secret models, they have like a super kind of fresh look about their eyes. Like they don't have a lot going on, it's usually just like quite simple but quite glowy. Um, so I'm going to go in with Naked from the Naked One palette from Urban Decay and I'm just going to use this dual fibre crease brush. I'm just going to blend this all up in here. Any kind of like light brown, like a brown that's like a shade or two deeper than your skin tone will, will look good. Um, and honestly, it would be a great thing to have in your collection because it's so usable for anything like even if you just chuck it in chuck some highlighter on your eyes rub some mascara and like that's done like i often do that so just getting a shade that's a shade <laughs> use some nouns um just getting a brown eyeshadow that's a couple of shades darker than your skin tone and depending on whether you're warm or cool tone in your skin like go for whichever compliments You'll use it to death. Like you can see like with this one, I've already hit, I've hit the pan on this one. And that's super rare. Like honestly, so rare. Cool. So I haven't been very like precise with that. I'm just buffing that all around the crease just to give my eyes a bit of dimension. A combination of these two shades here. So this is Sin and Virgin. Such a awkward name. So I'm going to take Sin just on my um, ring finger. And I'm just going to brush that lightly all over the lid. And then using a flat synthetic brush, I'm going to tap those into the centre. And I'm going to blend that all out again with this dual ply brush we were using before. Yeah. Um, so to finish with the eyes, I'm going to take, ooh, not that, kidding, to finish with the eyes, I'm going to take this 
uh, Milani Bella Eyes Gel Powder Eyeshadow, just a little single eyeshadow from Milani. Um, in, oh, I'm just dropping it everywhere. Get it together, man. Uh, in Bella Black. And I'm just gonna do like a teeny tiny line, kind of, it's, what I'm actually doing is I'm pressing it into my lash line. So rather than creating like a wing or kind of an eyeliner, um, I just want to create definition without looking like I'm wearing eyeliner. So what I'm going to do is just press it right into the arm. Now I'm probably pulling a little bit too hard on my eye there. It's not actually good for your skin. But it's on my own face, so, you know. I'm the one copying the bronzer, not anyone else. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm just going to take this flat to find a brush and I'm just going to press it lightly into the lash line. Now I don't know if you can see the difference there between the two eyes. But this one, it doesn't look like too much more is going on, but it's just got a bit more definition. So that's another neat trick if you, you know, don't want to look like you're going OTT on the eyeliner, but do like the definition that eyeliner gives you. Can be really good for a work, like a work kind of look. Particularly if you work in a more conservative environment, like a accounting or law or something. Can be real good. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And so now I'm just going to do the same thing. Again, I'm just blending it out with my finger. The heat from the finger can sometimes help um, mold the products together a little bit because it's creating that kind of welding heat. So I'm just going to pat that. I'm not pulling though, so I don't want to um, like smear the foundation I've got on off. But I am just patting it in other areas as well. So to finish off the cream portion of my face, I'm going to be taking two Maybelline Fit Me concealers. I'm going to be taking it in Fair Claire and in Sand. I'm going to be putting Fair Claire more liberally than Sand, kind of all around my face. So I really want to like get some dimension going without actually looking like I've got dimension. Like, oh, that's my face. I want to get that dimension going <laughs> without being like, oh wow, she's wearing crazy amounts of contouring or anything like that. That is just not the look. That is not the look we're going for. And then I'm just going to blend this out with my ring finger or my middle finger. brushes and sponges but I just haven't found one that I feel like does as good a job as my finger does with under the eyes. So if you have a brush that you love, because I do prefer using brushes and just like there's nothing wrong with your fingers but then you just end up with like gross foundation hands. Um, so if you've got a brush that you love for doing this kind of highlighting, cream highlighting, all the right to go. I want to hear about it. And then I put a little bit of Fair Claire just down here because I'm trying to create that illusion of having cheekbones, basically. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, using a lighter product under here rather than going straight in with like contouring powder is a technique known as reverse contouring. Um, An artist put in pearl has been doing it forever. Um, and it's really, like, I think it's really beautiful. It's a much more natural way of creating structure in the face without contouring. Although I am going to contour as well, so, well. Um, and what I'm just doing now is I'm just setting that powder so I just get all creasy. I'm setting with powder, I'm not setting that powder. I'm setting that concealer with powder so I just get all creasy. And 
and I'm using the RCMA Nutella powder along with the rest of the well because it's great and it's cheap. So I'm just going to put powder on areas that I know crease up or wear off on me. So for me that's my T-zone, yeah, my nose, under eye, my eyes and my chin. Um, but if you get oily elsewhere, like put powder elsewhere too. Now onto the rest of the face. Quick DC break. Okay. So the key with the kind of glowy look that a lot of the Victoria's Secret models have is to do a technique called haloing. So I'm going to take this Physician's Formula Translucent Pearl, I don't know what it's going to look like. Powder palette. It's not a palette. I don't know why they call it that. Um, but this is an amazing highlighter for someone who wants to look healthy, but not highlighted. And I'm just going to highlight, essentially, in circular motion, super lightly, picking up some product, and I'm just going to circle it all around this area and create a halo on my cheeks, as the name suggests. I wish I would have known that was me Cause even after all this time I still wonder Why I can't move on The idea is that you do this before you do any other face powder um, Other than setting it um, So it's underneath your bronzer or your blush or whatever um, And it just creates that kind of inner glow without being like Boom! She's wearing a highlighter Speaking of contouring and glowing I'm going to take the Lakura Beauty Compact Powder, but I've gotten it in a shade darker than me, and I'm going to use this to contour. This is the Aldi brand. Aldi makeup is surprisingly really good, and I was like, it's probably going to make me break out and die, because it's cheap, and cheap products tend to have um, more chemicals and things like that in them. Um, but it doesn't, so Aldi, good on ya. Um, and I'm just going to take this small fluffy brush because I don't want to look like I contour today. I want it to be super light and super natural, but I still want some structure to my face. So. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. We don't love anymore. What was all of you So using the smaller brush means I get less blendy. And then I'm going to go back in with this and blend it out. And the reason I do that is I want to get less product on my face. So rather than just going straight in with this, this big fluffy angled brush, which would distribute a fair amount of product around a fair amount of area, um, I just kind of place the product where I want it using this small brush, and then I'm blending it out and moving it around so there's less product on my face in general. And it looks more natural. Doesn't look like I've got like some hectic contour going on. Even though I do. Makeup. It's an illusion. And then because because I have quite a long face, as I've said in previous videos, I just put a little bit of bronzer underneath my chin to just lift it up a little bit. I'm now going to go in with a combination of two blushes. First is Spellbound. I don't know why I just held it up here. It's like, hey guys, look over here, off camera. Um, Spellbound by Makeup Geek. And it's going to be kind of like my face blush. Victoria's Secret Angles always. Angles. <laughs> I love a good Victoria's Secret angle show. Um, always looks super like blushy and flush and pretty. So I'm being fairly generous with this. But I'm using a large, super fluffy brush, which means it's picking up less product, so I don't get too heavy-handed. And the good thing about this blush too is it is actually like pigmented, but not so pigmented that when I use it, I'm just like, holy dooly, you need to chill out with that. If you know what I mean. And then I'm also going to go over that with this Clarins blush, illuminating cheek color. In number two, soft peach. I've been using this for ages and I really like it. It, it again doesn't have a huge colour payoff on, on immediate usage, 
Like it's not like you dip a brush in and that's, there's a lot on your brush. But I kind of like that, so that way it does actually mitigate me getting too heavy handed. Which I tend to do sometimes. And even then I put a little bit more on than I would like. Like at the moment I'm a little bit more blushy than I would like. But that's okay, because we're going to do something in a sec that will help with that. But first I'm just going to go in underneath my lash line with, again, with this uh, dual fiber brush and with Naked from the Naked One palette. So that's that light brown shade. I'm just going to dust that under my lower lash line just to balance it out a little bit. I'm taking this large fluffy brush I'm going to grab from the Lacura Stepping Out Contour Palette, which is a bit of a hit and miss, like this is again from Aldi, but this highlight shade, holy dooly, we're going to use it as on my cheeks as well in a second, but oh, it's just beautiful. I'm just, this is what I'm about. Thank you, Aldi. It's such a pretty highlighter shade. I'm just going to brush that under my temples. Not like that though, not like a big streak. That, well, it's not weird, it's just 80s, slash 90s. In the 90s, they had such hectic eye, um, eye... <sighs> brow bone, brow bone highlights. That's what I was trying to say. Like, they went for it. They were like, yes, give me some of that. Um, so, to finish off the look and the glow, I'm going to go in with, from that, this is the Cura palette. I'm going to go in with this pink shade here. I don't know if they have names. Nah. No names for you. And I'm using this flat but super fluffy brush. And I'm going to brush that on my cheek bones. As you can see, it kind of takes down that blush a little bit. Um, which is why I was happy to be a little bit OTT with it because I knew that once I put the highlighter on top, it was going to just take it down, take it down a notch. And then because, again, we're all about the glow, I'm going to go in with the Mary Luminizer from the Balm. But I'm going to go in super light with this because this stuff is like, tell her. And it just gets all up in here. So that's the face, pretty well done. To finish off this look, we are going to put on a crap ton of mascara. So, um, if I was doing like a full on Victoria's Secret look, I think I would also put on some individual lashes. But, I do want this to be wearable. So, we're just going to go ham on the mascara. I'm starting off with my old faithful Born This Way Better Than Sex mascara. And then I'm going to take the, I mean, I could just use that on my bottom lashes too, but I'm just, I'm just going for it today. So I'm going to take the Elizabeth Mott, is Elizabeth Mott? Yes. It's so big, volumizing mascara. I'm just going to pop this on my lower lashes. I am beautiful in every single way. I'm going to go in with another coat of the Better Than Sex mascara on my top lashes. And I'm just gonna let that dry for a sec. So while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to do my lips. So I'm gonna start with the Rimmel Exaggerate Lip Liner in East End Snob. Um, so I just put a little line along my bottom lip and then just tap that out. kind of blended that all over my lips because I don't want it to look too intense. Like I don't want it to look like I'm wearing like a hella amount of lip product. And then I'm going to take this Napoleon lipstick which is well and truly tried and tested. Um, this is in Hess. I'm just going to put a little bit of that over the top. Again, just popping it on my bottom lip and then smooshing my lips together. Now my eye, my eye mascara, my eye mascara, my eye, my mascara should be dry by now. So I'm just going to finish off with some Maybelline Lash Sensational. I love you, you know your love is a game. No, I can't. Yeah. 
Ah. And then to finish off, I'm going to take my favourite lip gloss of all time. This is the Laura Mercier Lip Glossé in Bare Pink. And because we want to look all like fresh and glowy and like youthful, gloss is a must for that kind of fresh look. And now I'm just going to set. And we're done! Uh, so that's the end of this Victoria's Secret inspired look. Um, it's super pretty, super put together, but also it does look you put in a lot of effort. Um, so if you just wanted to feel fresh and pretty, this is a great look to do. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you soon. Bye! Now I can't get you out of my brain. Oh, it's such a shame. We don't talk Dear thing, dear thing. Does this back? Cool, cool, cool. I love a good Victoria's Secret angle show.